Hey YouTube, thanks for checking out my channel. Today we're going to be working on this thing. Now if you have a Briggs engine on any mower, it doesn't have to be just a weed eater, but a Briggs engine that has this type of a carburetor system, you may be experiencing problems. Some of those problems may be not wanting to start in the spring after you ran it all summer the previous. It may be something like this where you pump the bulb and it just stays in. It could be that you have a hesitation and then it clears itself out and then continues to run smoothly after that. Or it could be just it doesn't start. It's not like it's getting fuel. You have good spark but you're not getting fuel. I'm going to show you how to fix these carburetors 90% of the time and it's very easy to do. You're going to need a can of carb cleaner. You're going to need a flat tip screwdriver obviously take off the air filter. You're going to need some sort of a scribe, possibly, or a flat tip screwdriver that's small that you can make a line with in aluminum. You're going to need a 3 8 socket. You're going to need a half inch socket. I've got an extension for the half inch. You're going to need a ratchet and you're going to need a screwdriver, a Phillips. Now, in this case, I'm getting rid of the ratchet and the Phillips and doing my lazy act and I'm using a Phillips on a drill driver and I'm going to use this as my ratchet. It goes a little bit quicker, but a Phillips and a ratchet is all that you really need. So they're basic tools and you're going to fix 90% of your carburetor issues with these tools. So let's jump into it. All right, the first thing you're going to do obviously is remove the air filter. Now something you want to take a look at is whenever you're tipping your mower over, look at the blades or anything like that, make sure that you tip the mower carburetor up or spark plug up one or the other you can't tip it any other way and the reason I mention that as I mess around with the air filter here is because a lot of times people have tipped their carburetors the wrong direction and have taken the oil from the engine and allowed it to come through the carburetor and fill this air filter once this air filter is full of oil it's not going to allow the engine to get the air that it needs and it's going to try to run on the oil that it's sucking in that's not going to work so be cautious of that so the first thing you want to do is look at the air filter make sure it's not clogged and make sure it's not full of oil after you've done that now you have to basically remove the two mounting points for this carburetor the first one's going to be a 3 8 bolt and that's this bolt right here i'm putting the socket on there back it off. You can throw it down in the valley here of the deck if you want to just to maintain it. Okay so the next one you're going to remove is this bolt right here. It's a half inch and there it is and I'll put that also on the deck. Now this is where it becomes slightly tricky and that is you're going to wiggle this gas tank off. Now when you wiggle this gas tank off all you're doing is pulling the carburetor off of a vacuum tube. Now there's a tube here that will be coming unseated. You don't have to worry about that. But as you pull this off, there's going to be an O-ring that's here or a plastic ring. You want to make sure that you don't lose that and it doesn't get misplaced. Now at this point, this linkage is the only thing that's holding it on. You're just going to tip it and it comes right out. You can see that thing is bent and it goes down into this hole right here. There's only one hole that it can go into. Also, you got to make sure that you don't lose this O-ring. This O-ring is very important to keep the carburetor running. Okay, so here we have the carburetor. And here's the two pieces that had come apart. Now this could be an issue. Again, if you lose these two pieces as you pull the carburetor off of that tube that runs to the engine, uh, it's not going to run. You need to have these sealed so it works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some carb cleaner, I'm going to clean this out real well, and then I'm going to reassemble this. Okay, so I went ahead and I cleaned this out, just sprayed carb cleaner in there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to place the O-ring in there and make sure that it seats real well. There's a pocket that it fits in. It only goes so far. And then this plastic ring here goes in and retains that and keeps it where it should be. So you're going to put that in there and clip it in and that's it. That's all taken care of. So let's jump into the next part. Okay, so the next part's even easier, I think and that is to clean this off with carb cleaner. You want to spray all this area off right through here to get all this gunk that is built up. You can see there. You may take a brush and brush that off initially 
to get the big stuff off, but you want to clean it all around that so whenever you lift this off, which I'll show you how to take that off, you don't get any debris falling down in there. Okay, now I got all that cleaned off, I used my air gun. Now it's a good idea if you have an air compressor, go ahead and use it. If not, you can use a toothbrush and clean around that. And again, take the carb cleaner and spray and get it away from the painted surfaces as quickly as possible. Because whatever you put it on, it'll pretty much wipe off the paint. So what we're going to do now is there's going to be five screws that we're going to remove. They're just Phillips head screws. That's where that Phillips screwdriver comes into play. I'm going to remove this air filter gasket just so I don't lose it. And this here I'm just going to leave on because it's not really in the way. But just be cautious of it in case you accidentally drop it or, or misplace it. You need to have that to hook this back into the uh, engine. So let's go ahead and remove these screws and I'll show you what it looks like whenever we're pulling it apart. Okay, now that the screws are loose, what you want to do is you want to carefully separate the carburetor from the tank. Now, on this one, in the past, I have worked on it. That's why this came apart so easily. But be cautious of this gasket here and this diaphragm. Now, I'm going to put the link down below. You can click the link. It's going to take you right to these two parts because it's a really good idea to have them if you're going to do this repair. In this case, I'm going to reuse what's already there. Although it looks like it's a little bit worn, I'm still going to go ahead and try to use it and see what happens because I believe this will work regardless. Now this is where you got to be cautious of a few things and this is what to look for basically. This tube here, make sure that it doesn't have any debris causing it to be blocked. I'm going to take carb cleaner and I'm going to spray up in there, then I'm going to take my air gun I'm going to blow up in there. If you want to, just put a cloth over top of this and blow in it with your mouth and that should make sure that it's clear. Okay, you're going to pull off this screen here and make sure that's clean. Don't forget to put it back on. You're going to spray carb cleaner in this area. You're going to spray carb cleaner and clean anything off that you see that's dirty in here. Now one of the screws just fell. I'm not too concerned about that, but I am going to push these screws out just in case you don't know what it looks like in here and it comes apart differently for you. And that is this gasket here wants to stick to the carb body. So peel it off carefully as not to break it if you're going to reuse. Again, I suggest that you buy a new one. Now inside here, you can see there's a spring and I'll spray this with carb cleaner. I also clean this off to some extent, but this really isn't the culprit at this point. So let's go ahead and just shoot this real quick with some carb cleaner, hitting those spots that I talked about. And then I'll spray the gasket. And then I'm going to reinstall all this back on the carburetor. At this point, this is pretty much cleaned up. I'm going to put this screen, once I clean it, I'm going to go ahead and put this screen back on. There we go. Now, this is kind of the critical part. Everything that I just showed you, if you can pull this carburetor off of the tank without any of this coming apart, you're going to be pretty much set as far as the gasket. This is what you need to look for. And that is debris down inside this well. So what I'm going to do is, as there is some dirt in there, I'm going to spray some carb cleaner in there, spray some carb cleaner all around, make sure it gets cleaned off, and then I'm going to take my air gun, I'm going to blow inside here to make sure all this comes out. Okay, so now I got all that cleaned out, you can see it's nothing but shiny metal down there, that's what it should look like. Now for you guys that are experiencing a problem with it running and then shutting down and loading up and then clearing itself up, Briggs had a problem with these carburetors and this is the only downfall that I've ever found with them. And that is this gasket here, because of the distance between these two screws, really didn't get enough support 
to allow this gasket to stay adhered to the tank like it should. So basically what happens is this gasket gets pulled back and there's a gap that develops and it makes it to where it doesn't want to run. But the gap sometimes is so small that it just takes a little bit of fuel to seal it off and that's why it runs and then it shuts off. There's a way to cure that and that is to take your scribe or your screwdriver and you're going to make a line on your tank. You're basically going to make something for that gasket to hold on to. You can see here I'm just scratching the tank. I'm just putting a, another edge there for it to grab onto. Kind of a quick fix. And this is what Briggs told us to do. Now, at this point, I'm going to reinstall everything. The screen's on, the gasket, the tube's clear, and when I install it, I'm actually going to try to position it to where the gasket might be a little bit further this way than what it should be. That also helps out with that gasket trying to creep back in. And of course the first couple screws that I'm going to tighten are going to be the ones on this side. Because I want that gasket to be secured there. Let's go ahead and put all the rest of the screws in now. and tighten them up. Okay, so at that point the carburetor is done. It's ready to go back on. See, it was really easy. So I want to make sure I want to return my air filter gasket back on to the carburetor. And let me reposition the camera and show you how it goes back on. The first thing you're going to do is make sure that you get this small linkage into that hole that we took it out of. Like I said, there's only one hole and that's it. That's all there is to it. Now there's a smaller hole that's next to it. It won't fit, so you don't really have to worry about that one. Then at that point, you want to line up the tube here with that O-ring that we replaced inside the carburetor. Also, you want to make sure that this breather tube is going on at the same time. And slide it on. Right now the carburetor is on, believe it or not. Now all we have to do is tighten it down to make sure it doesn't come off. First thing I'm going to do is replace that half inch screw. Now the 3 8 bolt goes in the front. As far as the carburetor repair, it's done. You can put on the air filter and push the ball primer bulb and make sure that it starts. That's really all that needs to be done at this point. However, I want to also talk about one other problem. If your mower has been running great, but all of a sudden it has had a problem of some sort, you want to make sure this linkage stays free. Make sure that you didn't run underneath a tree and accidentally bend this because this is how you adjust your idle. These engines run about 3100 to 3300 RPMs. And if you hit this, it will make it to where the tension on this spring against the governor won't be like it should and it will make it to where the engine runs at a very low RPM. Also, these have a tendency to move around. It's okay as long as this spring doesn't get affected as far as its overall tension. Although this is moving, the tension going to that governor, the vein governor, isn't that much. So you can, if you want, bend these down to where this doesn't move at all because all your adjustments done right here. The reason that this moves is because some carburetors have a cable adjustment and you run your throttle by cable and that's where it goes in right here but that's not the case with these now that we have this all together I'm gonna to put the air filter on and start it up okay so we got it all back together let's go ahead and pump this primer just three times There's one there's two and there's three and then we'll pull back the bail
just like it's supposed to. Okay, there you have it. You see, that's not very hard to do. And these carburetors are all the same on a lot of these Briggs engines that has that style of a carburetor. They're all basically put together the same. It's really easy to take apart. It's really easy to repair. I love these problems and I love these carburetors. I don't really have too many issues. It's always the same thing. That's why I'm doing the video. It seems like 90% of the time that's going to cure your problem. I'm going to put the link down below for that gasket and that fuel pump diaphragm because you're probably going to need it at some point down the road, especially if it's going to be yours. But this is a real easy to repair. If you like this video, click subscribe or click like, and I'll try to get more on just like it. I appreciate it. Thanks.